morning all and thank you for joining us for the webinar on unified view of work life and Aditya Billa Financial Services Group success story in partnership with People Strong. This is Rohit from People Matters and before moving to the agenda of the day, let me give you a brief of the topic. When you have 14,000 employees spread across 1,500 points of presence, getting the single view of data is one of the biggest challenges. Disconnected systems are often difficult to integrate and result in revenue leakage and a significant business impact. Aditya Villa Financial Services Group understood the power of a unified view of work life for employees, managers, HR teams and CXOs and leveraged the power of software as a service and mobile to empower them. Hear it from Mr. Suresh Mani, who spearheaded the digital HR transformation at such a large scale, as he shares his experiences and insights from the journey. We will be discussing in the webinar the following things. First, why a unified or integrated view was needed, wherein we'll discuss the unique Aditya Billa Financial Services Group challenges and how it was unlike any other organization. Second, the journey, wherein we'll discuss the approach followed, considering the challenges faced, the key challenges, how are the challenges managed, and the key learnings. And finally, the impact. Let me now introduce you with the speakers for this webinar. We have the privilege of having with us Mr. Suresh Mani, who is the head of HR Ops and Shared Services, Aditya Billa Financial Shared Services. Suresh Mani is head of HR Ops and Shared Services of Aditya Billa Financial Shared Services. He is with this group since 2010. He is responsible for implementing HR Shared Services for the financial services business of Aditya Billa Group. He has a rich experience of 19 years in the domains of HR. He was associated with companies like ANZ, Verizon, Wipro, and HCL. He was pivotal to build HR practices and was instrumental in the growth strategy of Verizon from 180 to 4000 plus in 2002 to 2006. Another speaker that we have today is Mr. Prakash Rao, who is the VP of HCM Solutions People Strong. Prakash Rao is a founding member and vice president of the multi process HR outsourcing business at People Strong. An expert in the field of HR transformation, Prakash has led the transformation of human resources for various leading organizations of India. He has special expertise in the field of HR shared services and has led the implementation of HR and recruitment shared services for clients across industries. With a rich experience of over 16 years, he manages some of the top customers at People Strong. Our partners for today's webinar is People Strong. Established in 2005, People Strong is a leading HR solutions and technology company from India delivering cutting-edge technology-enabled HR solutions in the space of recruitment, employee lifecycle management, payroll and compliance management and analytics. The company is enriching experience of over 175 plus customers and over 5 lakh users for over a decade now. Known for its penchant to innovate, PeopleStrong has many firsts to its name. The recent one being India's first native HR app, which aims to transform the future of work and work life across corporates and organizations. We have an exciting topic to discuss in this webinar today. So without any further delay, let me invite Prakash to take over. Over to you, Prakash. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rohit, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you all on call where we're discussing a very important topic today, which is an unified uh, view of work life. Now, before I hand over to Suresh to give a context of uh, Auditor Billa Financial Services Group on how we went about making this transition, I would like to set the context here in terms of why are we discussing this. Now, uh, today in a scenario where artificial intelligence and automation is generally spreading panic amongst people that there's job cuts, HR is under tremendous pressure from businesses across the world, not just in India. So HR is being asked a question in terms of how can they partner business, how can they add to bottom line. Because while people are talking about job cuts, it's actually not a sunset that's happening, it's actually a sunrise. Because the jobs that are getting cut in the market today are drudgery jobs, jobs, the ones which are in the bottom of the pyramid. So the job level and the job profile of people are really moving up because of automation and because of AI. So in that scenario, what role does HR play? How does HR really transform businesses is the question that we're asking. And this is one question which I think Aditya Birla Financial Services Group started asking themselves four to five years back. 
And one of the people who's been key in answering this question and helping them realize the answer has been Suresh Mani. I've known Suresh for the last 10 years working with him. He is a change management specialist. He's somebody who has the ability to trans, you know, take transactions and transform them into strategy. Very few people in HR are able to think business. So Suresh is one of them. It's been a privilege to work with him. So what we're going to talk to you today is in this new day and age, what are the challenges that HR faces and how do you transform HR transactions to be able to support the business? This is what we're going to talk to you through a case study of Aditya Birla. So without much ado, I will hand over to Suresh who can just set, take us through what Aditya Birla has done and how this change has happened. Over to you, Suresh. Thank you, Prakash. Uh, good morning to you all. It's a new experience for me after a long time being in a webinar an opportunity to uh, see you all invisibly. You know, today morning when I started uh, my day, my daughter came in and asked me a small question. Uh, Papa, why is that you're looking a little weird today, making too many notes? So I was telling her that, you know, I'm working on a chat services presentation, how we transformed our organization. So she said, yeah, you're a chat services specialist, uh, so you call. I need a help from you. I said, what you want? I want to do chat services. I have, and I want to give a uniformed experience to my teachers. So do me one thing, uh, complete my homework, whatever I have to do today. And uh, that will be a good uh, start for you to understand how to manage administration so that I can start thinking at class uh, to be strategic by listening rightly. Sometimes it happens at home also we do chat services in a lighter note. And I would like to go into the slide on uh, introduction about uh, ABFS G as a company. As you'll be knowing, like, you know, we are in a financial services, and financial services works on uh, different rhythms. So we are a non-financial services organization, banking organization, where our focus is on three parameters. One is we help people who have money, or we help people who need money, or we help people, you know, for whom we have to protect their money. So we are into business, like, people who are of needing business, we help them with loans. It could be at a large scale uh, lending to corporates or it could be a small scale or retail scale where we lend to retail or to a personal loan. So for those set of resources, so we do service them. The second is having product money. So our people who need protection, for them we have insurance products which help people to get protected and for their families. And the third uh, type of business is like you have a lot of money, so you can always invest in us either in a form of a mutual or you can do your trading or you can use our wealth management uh, products so that uh, you can create more money. This is the line of business. So this business, if I put it in a simple way, as resources, what we require is people who have good uh, relationship management experience are the key resources who can succeed, uh, which means the people who understand the customer, understand the customer need, help them in giving the right uh, product so that it helps that resource uh, enrich his life. Hence, our vision starts with a focus saying like uh, we would like to be a leader and a role model in a financial service sector with a broad band and integrated business. So this is a key thing from a business perspective. So we need to look at, you know, how to create a business model within HR to ensure that all our business lines get uniformed experiences. If they get uniformed experiences, it will also help us in providing or the employees can help in ensuring the same experience pass on to the customers. So that was the thought process we had. And the second thing is like if you notice as it was introduced, scale in which we are in. So we are roughly around 14,000 employees spread across around almost 800 locations. You can imagine the kind of people we would be having. You know, we might be having resources from a remote location, with a certain level of capability and potential. And we also might have resources who are highly potential. Also imagine that we have resources coming from a different gender, different cultural uh, backgrounds. So we need to understand this diverse workforce. Also, we are in a different business lines. As I shared, we are into insurance, we are into mutual funds, we are into lending business. We have different regulators also to be 
always seen upon and have a consistency there. So hence we have to look at how are we going to create one uniformed approach was the, one of the key challenges we faced. And the second challenge we had in our situation is like since it's various companies, every company had its own uh, business systems or subsystems. So how all the systems can be integrated into HR system so that data flow can help. So for example, if a sales force goes to the field, you know, in a click of a button, he should be able to see his business results. So how that data has to flow from HRMS, you know, maybe like how his attendance information goes in, how his supervisor can see it in his multiple systems. So those are the one of the key challenges we had from an uh, integration perspective. And the other thing I was sharing that we are with our own 12 different business units. Each unit, if you look at, we have as young as businesses, which is three months old, units have started. And we also have business units, which is almost 15 years plus in experience. And they have fit really well. They have a certain level of maturity. We need to look at, at that one. Second thing, you have business which is scaling up in a very fast rapid wherein we hire around 400 to 500 people in a month. And also we have businesses which scale up in a very steady manner, also need to be adhered and we have to ensure the experience has to be uniform. The next challenge comes also since we are a large scale, you have more number of uh, frontline sales professionals, you know, servicing customers. We also have attrition. So how the entire attrition management has to be looked upon, how the entire employee life cycle has to be looked upon of these different industries has to be, you know, where the key challenges that we had. While we are doing these key challenges, we also felt that the, every unit had a different structure of storing data in our previous system. So we want to have to ensure how can we have this data accuracy, you know, so that in a simplest way, people maybe at the central level or at a unit level or at a zonal level or at a regional level should be able to see the data as accurate as possible. So that was another challenge was thrown upon and also bring a process discipline. So that is a key thing to make any shared services success. So these are the key challenges we had when we looked upon. To overcome that, you know, what we did is we said like we had three focus areas. So one is the most important is if we are able to enrich the employee experience in an ease manner for them, then the same ease can be also felt when they service their customers. So with that thought process in mind, we wanted to have a system process and service from HR to our employee to be with, with a better experience, and experience should be ease. And also we said it should have accuracy with speed. So we were looking at how we can do that. And also by doing this, we also wanted to see that how the onboarding experience and the productivity improves. Is that employee productivity improvement happens within a period of time and how much we can reduce it. You know, maybe within first day of productivity or second day of productivity or the second point of key focus area that we had where we said like the resource has to be productive at the fastest pace and within you know a period depending you know that a business line also we have so we wanted to say a consistency within 15 to 30 days the resource should be productive ensure his hygiene are in place as simple as this employee ID, as simple as this email ID, his system, making sure his manager speaks to him, set the exact KRA on time, record it in the system, uh, and then have a dialogue. So that we also put a system to monitor it in the name of Accelerate to see how the employee is getting onboarded faster and quicker. And it becomes a continuous process to monitor how to improve our processes from the program called Accelerate. And having that, the another key focus area as we were sharing is like data to be uniform so that it helps the business to use the data more accurately for understanding the dynamics of how we can meet the competitions more better. So this was the three key focus areas that we had in mind and with that we were looking at you know how they can be solved and we were looking at a partner who can help us out. So we will request Prakash to put on how he helped us in solving the process. Sure. Thanks, Suresh. So uh, with this context of uh, 
Aditya Birla Financial Services Group on where they were and what were the key focus areas that they had. Now I'm going to take you through how did we go about achieving this transformation. So uh, how did we solve this? When we went about solving this problem, uh, one thing we were very clear was that we wanted to be the drivers of efficiency within the organization, like Suresh said. We wanted to ensure that the employees are getting an accurate, fast response. And we wanted to automate processes so that we could enable a three-tier model. So what is the three-tier model I'm talking about? Before I talk about, let me take you to the three-tier model. A three-tier model is there are three key stakeholders who perform employee transactions. One is the employee himself who does it in a do-it-yourself work. For example, applying for leave today is done by an employee on his own. That's a do-it-yourself, right? Second is people set up HR shared services, large centers who manage large-scale transactions for employees. And the third is HRBPs. These are typically the people who front-face with the organizations. This is a three-tier model, employee, shared services delivery center, and the HRBPs. When we started off working with Aditya Birla Financial Group, because they had, set, they had some or one kind of a shared services which they had in their organization already. So they're already working on it. So what they did, what we did was that when we checked, uh, around 15% of the work was being done in a do-it-yourself model by the employees. And around 50% of the work was being done by HR shared services. But while HR shared services were doing 50% of the work, it was being done in multiple systems. And the third was HRBPs were managing around 35% of the transactions on the ground. So 15% by employees, 50% by HR shared services, and 35% by HR partners. Now, like Suresh started off giving an example of his daughter, uh, the question that HR partners were being asked was they needed to partner business and they needed to ensure that they're adding to the bottom line. So while HR partners were spending one third of their time doing these transactions, the question really was, how do we transform this and take away transactions from them? Which is a typical question which is being asked of any shared services team. So here's what we did. So to take care of this, we said we're going to take the top five or six key transactions where an HRBP spends maximum time. So we did interviews with HR partners. We went ahead and asked them questions in terms of what are the transactions that they do and where do they perform these transactions and do they follow a specific process. So we followed a SIPOC model. I don't know how many of you are aware of a SIPOC model in which we captured all the information of what an HRBP does. Once we captured information from all, all HRBPs, we went back and we took it to Suresh and Shubro, who is the CHRO of uh, Aditya Billa Financial Group, and we told them this is how your people are currently running transactions. And we said there are key three things required here to be able to transform the organization. The first one is standardization. Can we really standardize because of the fact that there are multiple business entities and multiple locations there were a lot of people who were doing work in a specific manner in a location in an entity. We wanted to really standardize that. Can we give one Aditya Birla experience to every single person who gets into the organization, irrespective of which business unit he gets into? That was the first thing we said. Let's standardize. Second um, key thing we took was how do we automate processes so that we can push most of the automated transactions to do it yourself to the employee? While we were saying this, I still remember we were having these conversations. Most of the HR partners were questioning Suresh and Shubro as to how are you going to ask employees to do their own transactions. They were worried that their employees might not be happy to perform some of their transactions on their own. And I still remember the example that Suresh and Shubro gave. Uh, imagine a bank today. Imagine banks 20 years ago. You had to walk to a bank and do a lot of transactions at the bank. Today, through a mobile app, and through a web module, through ATMs, you hardly ever go talk to a banker. You do most of the transactions on your own. And we're happy doing it. We feel empowered doing it. So that was the example that Subro and Suresh took to tell the HR partners that employees are going to be happy doing the transactions as long as we empower them and we make it easy for them to do those transactions and not make it complicated which led to our third objective, which was how do we simplify the work life of an employee? So these were the key three things we took. One was standardization. Second was ensuring that we're doing a do-it-yourself through automation. Third one was simplifying the work life of all the employees. With this, 
what we put together was we picked up five transactions. One was onboarding, the employee life uh, transitions, any transfers, promotions, redesignations. Then we picked up payroll, help desk, and the exit transactions. This is the five transactions we took, and we said we're going to centralize them. To centralize this, we wanted to ensure that we put them all on a platform. So People Strong Alt is the platform we put all these transactions on, and we ensure an employee is able to manage 40% of his transactions on his own without talking to an HR partner or without talking to anybody in HR. Well, HR Shared Services continue to do 50% of the transactions you know, in the new model as well. The actual change happened for an HR partner from almost 35% of the work that he was doing, it came down to 10%. And I'll take a couple of examples to tell you how. Typically in an exit transaction, uh, what happens is an HR partner plays an active role in an exit. We realized that there were a lot of exits happening at the front line where an HR partner is spending time which might not be necessary. So a simple workflow where an employee goes and you know, punches in his resignation on the system, post he does it, it goes up to his L1 manager for approval. If he approves it, then an employee gets a survey on his system to fill up his feedback about how his ABFSG has been. Once that's done, NDC starts automatically on the system and all of the triggers go to employees, NDC triggers go to each of them. They all have access to the system, they complete NDC there. So an HR partner is not playing any role. Once NDC is done, it comes back to HR shared services team, they create the FNS and pay the employee. That's the kind of automation we brought in to reduce the workload of transactions to an HR partner and also to empower people to work in a do-it-yourself model. So while we were doing this, Suresh and Subro were very clear that this day and age, it can't be done without having a mobile platform. They were very clear from day one that with the advancement the mobile technology has seen, we have to ensure that employees are able to do this on a mobile app as well. It's not enough to create a web-based access. So we ensured that we built these modules on a mobile app as well. So we have a native mobile app on which an employee is able to do all these transactions. Like an attendance, a person when he walks into the office of Aditya Billa Financial Group, the person he has an attendance app, he goes there, he is geotagged to that location. So the attendance app only allows him to punch in if he is within that location. So he punches in and he punches out. No more standing in a queue in front of the biometric machine to put your uh, fingerprint. So that was taken away. That's how we empowered people. People have to upload their documents before joining. They have access to a system wherein they can take a photo and they can upload the documents on a system rather than taking photocopies and Xerox copies and walking around with them. When an employee is getting transferred, the HR partner just has to initiate the transfer on the system. All the other activities in the back end happen automatically. And then the most important part was creating a help desk at the center wherein any query an employee has, if he doesn't understand something, if there's a transaction he's not able to perform, we created a central help desk through which all these queries would get resolved. So an employee had access on a mobile app to go in and ask the question. Within one day, the employee gets a response back on his mobile app. That is how the kind of system we created. We able to ensure that we transform the experience. Once we did this, let me take you through some of the impact that we were able to create. So, like I said, ease and experience was the top thing. We were able to simplify work life. We were able to ensure that employees are getting a do-it-yourself model. You want to check your payslip. You want to apply for reimbursement. You want to apply for leave. Everything happens on a mobile app. Employees don't have to take the time of HR. We were able to create one single experience across 1,500 locations. We were able to ensure that anybody sitting in any location is joining ABFSG. He goes through a similar experience to a person who is joining the corporate office. And then we ensure that the payroll becomes accurate, timely and accessible to employees. Because when it comes to money, we all very eagerly await the salary day. So when the salary day happens, can I get all the required information of my salary and my salary slip on my mobile without me having to ask a person? Can I get this information in terms of why was this deduction done? How is this going to work? All of that on a mobile platform so that the employee doesn't have to talk to somebody. So we achieved ease and experience there. Then speed. Because of everything getting automated, we were able to ensure that most of the work gets done 100% on the date is required. 100% background verification for new joiners through integration, system integration. We ensured that the transactions 
that employees are performing, it gets them 60 to 70 percent faster. If an employee is getting transferred from one location to another, if he's spending his own money to be able to do the relocation, if he's getting paid within 60 days after the person moving to a new location, we were able to ensure it comes down to 15 days. We were able to ensure that the person, somebody who's leaving the organization, on the day of leaving, he knows how much NDC has done, when is he going to get his full and final check, what's the amount he's going to check, that visibility was created. Then finally, efficiency, in terms of reducing the time that an HRBP took to manage transactions, that was completely removed. We ensured that the HRBP is able to focus on business rather than focus on transactions. And then we also ensured that we did governance and tracking. I think, like I said, Suresh is a change management specialist. He ensured that there was a strong governance process through which we were able to ensure that we are looking at each and every transaction. If there are challenges, how do we mitigate them? We were able to achieve efficiency through that. Now, that was the impact. So once we did all of this, this is where ABFSG moved to. Earlier with multiple systems, multiple things working on different systems, employee having to go to different systems to do different things, and even there, an employee would have to do certain parts, and a child would do certain parts. From that kind of a scenario to a new scenario, where everything is running in one single system, an employee gets to do 35 to 40% of the transactions on his own without talking to anybody, and the HR partners work in transaction is completely cut off to a minimum where he just becomes an escalation point or he becomes a decision point. That's the only role an HRBP was playing. This is how we were able to transform the and bring a unified work life at Aditya Billa Financial Services Group. So just to reiterate, I will say three key things that we did. We standardized. We ensured that everything is one single experience, one single process. Number two, we automated to ensure we're taking transactions in a do-it-yourself model to the employee. Number three, we simplified his work-life balance by introducing a mobile app through which he was able to do things at his own convenience. So this is the journey in terms of how we were able to change the unified work-life experience. Now, while we did that, there were some key learnings, there was some key information that we got out of this. So now I'll hand over to Suresh again, who will take us through what are the key learnings, how did they achieve this change, what are the challenges that they faced. Suresh, if you could talk about that, please. Thank you. So as Prakash was sharing that one of the focus area that has been put into a standardized process, giving a uniformed experience, also making more digitalized so that employee themselves in a click of a button using an app or a portal, they can make it easy. It's a journey, as I was uh, sharing in the start, that you know we have to continuously look at how things are improving in the market and how we need to you know adapt and also improve ourselves so that employee experience becomes you know better. So people strong plays a vital role for us. So I keep sharing it's a backbone. So we always think the partner whom we choose should be our extended HR. So we work like extended HR, uh, share the business challenges and how to help and transform. So in all our discussions, when we started with the leadership change, we said like, you know, we want to create one ABFG experience to all our uh, CXOs and they were uh, gung about it. They were appreciative about it. But the question is, we are saying like, how can we make through an uniformed approach. We have our own regulatory and other requirements. So we looked at the legacy, the regulations, and uh, we know what are the transformation that we can create. In. So one is we had an internal dialogue in terms of bringing the consensus. So the key player there was Mr. Subrabhadri, who's our CHRO, played a vital role in discussing along with every CXO on the strategy which was created because one of the key strategy as HR for business was creating a golden chat services program, which means he was talking about a service which is being spoken with delight by the employee. So that was the one thing he was sharing as part of the strategy of his four pin three pillars. One key pillar was the Golden Shed Services Program. So that assimilation of thought and a buy-in helped us to get the leadership buy-in to take it to the next level. And the most important is when we got the buy-in, how each and every unit HR head, you know, the zonal or the regional or a vertical head or the single member in the HR team 
would act upon. So we said like we we'll form a core operation team which comprises of HR leaders of various units who is going to be part of the program, making sure they are in all uh, discussion and designing to implementation. So one thing I was just emphasizing Sakash and team is like we should look at not having more of a traditional approach, we should have flexibility. So we should look at something like agile methodology wherein understand what is the process, you know, understand the currency and the need of the business and look at, you know, creating a small prototype and showcase this is how the process and the system will work so that the team gets that feeler and give them an environment to also experience and then we we'll say like, okay, then we'll go and implement it. So this is the kind of approach uh, I was just suggesting and good that in most, some of the process we have to take straightforward action. In some of process like onboarding or exit, we took a little bit of flexibility to, you know, work together, understand the Agile, through Agile methodology, the process was put in place. So that the deepening issues, which normally takes longer period, has got, you know, reduced and we could see some significant movement and positive result over there. So the entire implementation took phase of 80% adoption in the first week of employee coming back using the system, started feeling the betterment, ease of it, and we also could complete the initial implementation cycle within 45 days, uh, which was the faster pace, which I could think a scale of our size could achieve. Then most important is like continuous process and continuous process improvement comes to a right governance structure. So we made the governance structure in three folds. One is being at a transaction level, understanding the pain and issues at the transaction level. It could be as simple as an employee or a HR or the shared services folks, how they do the activity which could be easy for them, Validation should be right, recording should be right, so that's one. So we made an operation level review, which happens on a weekly basis between PS and my operation team, so that it becomes easier for us to understand and fix as quick win and a long win. So that was the first thing we did. Second we did is the core team program, where we call the core uh, HR folks, uh, key stakeholders, including HRs, uh, they're being met on a monthly basis, review uh, the processes, and the processes are being reviewed from a level of enabler, process, and result. So that, you know, first we look at results, we have something called voice of the customer, we get views from internal stakeholders, employees, to instant feedback or to, you know, having a chat on an offline or in a formal way, gather those information and we also look at what is the SLA performance is happening, go back to the enablers, what is our strategy of, you know, of the program is to create ease, experience and speed so that, you know, which focuses on standardization, uniformity, so with technology, that's a focus. So we want to see how the SLAs are being worked upon. So that is the second performance parameters are being aligned. We look at it and see how those process are enabling, you know, us. So we created, we ensure like, what is the enablement happening? What is the improvement is happening? Where are we going towards? So those were uh, the structure. And also we took risk mitigation plan. So what are the risks possible? So we created a risk matrix at an operation level. And we said like, what are the risks involved how to mitigate those risks. Uh, for example, you know, for us, this, and a resource get exited, this system uh, need to be activated on zero on the same day. So if it doesn't happen, we have a high risk potential of uh, taking data. So we look at how that can be mitigated. Look at how the onboarding process, if the resource is not getting onboarded on the day, what could be the issues? Similarly with transfer, so we looked at each and every activity, we looked at what is the potential risk and how to mitigate. So the entire SOP was drafted so that this also is reviewed during our core team. And the third one we made a three months, uh, you know, month quarterly review program with the steering committee which includes Subhra and the leadership team to see the progress and the strategic point on what are the key things that we have to bring improvement, what are the alignment or what are the integration we need to bring into the process so that the entire program get enriched. So 
we are using our business excellence framework, which I just quickly shared, looking at enablers and results perspective. So we keep reviewing and look at how to improve. So that is what we do from a governance and a structure. And all those success comes with how you communicate. The communicate and communication need to happen at three levels. One is at an employee level, one is at a stakeholder level, and a third one is at a leadership level. So employee level or could be more related to making them understand the process system and where we are heading towards an operational so that employee also knows that, yes, there is a change, there's a transformation, and which is helping them out. So that is being kept as a key activity. And then we also look at the stakeholders. So we look at stakeholders from, you know, from a business lever perspective, how the SLA and performance of uh, the shared services works. So we align that, and then we look at from top management perspective, how, you know, cost, we look at from an alignment of the experience of what employee perceived, we look at it and share that as part of the governance structure and a communication so that the communication more you do, the more people understand and appreciate taking things forward. So that's how we have implemented. Prakash, over to you. Thanks, Suresh. Uh, thank you so much for summarizing that wonderfully. This is what we had to share in terms of the case studies that we wanted to present today. So it's over for uh, your questions now. So we're ready to take your questions. Thank you, Prakash and Suresh, for the great insights. This was a very valuable session for all of us. Let's move on to the Q&A. We have a question from Arun. He asked, what are the grievances or issues raised prior to and post this intervention? So, Prakash, I think one of the grievances was that, I think like Suresh spoke of in the beginning, employees were not getting a unified experience. Employees at different locations, at different levels in the same location, were very, getting a very different kind of an experience. So this led to feeling amongst people that uh, there is no, uh, you know, there were questions of equanimity in the organization. That was number one. Number two was that whenever they had a transaction, because of the fact that they had to work on different systems and they had to talk to multiple people, the time required to close one of their transactions was taking a lot of time. For example, if you're getting a transfer done, if you wanted a bona fide letter, anything, any any simple transaction that you wanted to perform as an employee, that was taking a lot of time because there were multiple people, multiple systems involved, right? And the third big thing was the employee overall experience. If you look at the overall HR score that you know Subro and Suresh used to track, that was again no, but it wasn't very high as well. And uh, they were very clear that they wanted to become one of the top employers in the BSSI sector. And uh, these were the top three grievances that employees used to face before this intervention was introduced. Thank you. Uh, I think that answers uh, the question that you asked, Arun. We have another question from Sweta Shukla, who asked that, does this application work for even smaller company where a lot of decisions are in hands of management or clients, as they say that they are into recruitment, and most of the exit depends on the wait period, as in, they have to wait for the decision to come from clients. Yes, uh, so a system can work for anybody. A system does not have a limitation of the number of employees that you have. Uh, people from Alt is working for employees of, with, with 50 members. It's working for organization like Aditya Birla, which has 15,000 people as well. So system does not have an issue. So number of employees doesn't have any bearing on that. Your specific question that you asked in terms of exit, that you're basically talking about a workflow. If clients are part of your workflow for an exit to get approved, that can be configured in the system, wherein after the line manager approves the exit, it could be sent to a client for approval as well, and only NDC starts to oppose that. So that is definitely possible in any of the new age systems that are there in the market, we can configure that kind of workflow. To add upon uh, the question like on exit specifically, two things like, you know, how the process is set. The process can be as lead. So the, one of the experience here, what we are doing is like, chat services plays a vital role. We know that there are touch points where employee have to connect or the manager has to give the decision on the resignation. So there are touch points in terms of maybe as simple as SMS blast going to him, uh, remind him, also gives a notification to mobile as well as in the system as task reminder. And also it has a call facility happens to key stakeholders telling them like, hey, this is a case where you need to act upon. So that how the process is enabled, you can use the technology and the way the process is put in to ease in the things. Yeah, so we have a question uh, that what were some of the metrics that put to measure the unified experience of employees? 
what we did is like we created uh, processes, for example, onboarding. And onboarding is again subdivided into smaller tasks or activities. And we looked at immediate process output. For example, if you look at onboarding as one, you know, the resource get hired, offered, what was the time taken, and then when the onboarding link was shared. When the employee filled the link, what was the touch point by shared services team to connect with the employee, explain him how the process works, system works, give the right reminders so that this also the data which we get from the shared services team in terms of connectivity with the employee, there could be some absence also, it becomes like an early warning signal to us. So we looked at a process that uh, what is a process then we created a process output which is an immediate need and then we also looked at a measurement of impact on people so we took a survey so as I shared we take instant uh, feedback from uh, the employee who have joined uh, we have a program called accelerate we take feedback so what happens is like this measurement helps us to look at Okay, uniformity, whether the process is, one is the process output, looking at the tag, whether it's happening within that timeline, is the touch point is happening on the timeline. We also take data to see whether is there any early non-acceptance of people in the system, plus the outcome, what we look at from the feedback from the can employee, how was this experience, so that if there are any challenges, we fix it. So, for example, onboarding, we are seeing a trend almost 96 percentage of the employees are more happier from you know they coming joining getting the systems getting their email id access they're able to do their inductions on time these are the positivity we have seen we also seen you know a level at a process output in onboarding where a small such as id card it takes one day or two days delayed so it has come as from the you know from an impact on people so we take that and working backwards saying like can we make that process also more being can it be through technology and onboard ID card can be given and these are the things we are discussing so these are the measures we look at so the measures we look at is process and we create the sub process for it and then we see what is the process output you know we need immediately we have those parameters as a shared you know a TAT and then SLA and then we look at taking these surveys from a survey or feedback from an employee which gives a feedback back again to see how the process worked and what is the improvement required. Is it clear? So this question was asked by Sakshi. I hope that answers your question. Thanks a lot, Suresh and Prakash. We have a very interesting question from Nitin Bhatia. The question is, what was the extent of change in internal processes that was done or was customization done in the system to match the current processes? Yes, there was uh, customizations were made. I think Prakash also can contribute. One is, for example, onboarding process was a process where it, since the people were spread across in different part of the country, entire documentation were in a form of a courier, which used to take seven to 10 days to reach. Then we have to create our employee code. So we used to see a delay between four to 15 days of delay on creating an employee code. The technology interference, the customization of the same had helped us in reducing that to creating the employee code on the same day of the you know documentation completion. So one of the key thing also, the documentation quality and validation. So we had to look at customizing that to the need of the business. In financial business, we have more controls required. So we have put larger controls. The system was flexible to provide those customization uh, and also willing to learn and you know transform uh, to the need how we move on. So it's being done in both ways. One is customization, also digitalization helped in reducing the process time and the cost. And Prakash, I think to add to what Suresh is saying, wherever, if any tweak needs to be done in the system, to ensure we're able to bring in better experience and uh, uh, standardize the process, that definitely was done so that we could uh, uh, take the processes to the next level for sure. Uh, next question, Rohit. Thanks, Prakash and Suresh. We have a question from Shraddha Shetty. She asked, what was the communication plan used to make the entire implementation process a success? How did you convince the senior leadership team to do the transactions by themselves? One, the leadership team were very keen on creating a golden shared services program. That was the first buy-in. And we have been seeing the leadership team most of the time 
and i would say most of them are technologically savvy so they were part of some of our initial implementation or or orientation program so that gave us a lot of leeway that is number one the biggest challenge is like reaching to the last mile of the employee to make him or her understand the technology so we did a road show across the country invited employees uh, to participate so that the system understanding happened and the best way of reaching the employee uh, what we could see in our environment is attractive communication which can a simpler way of communication in terms of uh, having a good graphical representation and a way where employee can understand so we created a mascot uh, using a mascot we created a did you know series through a email and we shared it the second thing what we have done also like we realized that since we have field resources though they have access to the mobile they can check the mails uh, they can understand we also realized like we will we'll push on some quick you know short form of videos to them to make them understand how the process works so we did that too where we we kept in central repository we requested the respective hr team to cascade that also we helped third thing we also did simple sms blast on talking about how to mark attendance how to you know get their bonafide letter how to get their payslip uh-huh. in a simple sms was shared that also helped us in creating that you know communication and the change hope i answered the question yeah so we have a follow up on this question what the employees doing their part seriously how you were able to manage the how would you be able to sustain the uh, adoption rate one good thing is like uh, this particular technology what we have adopted we have said like the attendance marking would be through the technology so that's a key thing we did the employees are made to enter into the system mark the attendance and hence we had good announcement communication and a branding in the portal or in the uh, mobile app so that employee can understand and transact better and we also made that as simple as space slip will be in only in technology so the employee uh, would know that i have to go and take you know pay slip with the technology the third thing if i have a question if i have to ask a query so we gave two provisions the uh, three provisions is one is you can go into the portal or to the application apps to raise this query the query will be responded uh, secondly we also kept an email facility where you can raise a query through the mail and ticket will be raised and responded and third we kept calling facility so that employee can call and you know get its response so that you know touching the employee on best ways it's one thing we also learned something in this journey where you know connecting to employee because you know as we are talking we're all invisible where it's all the feeling what you get and the voice you hear so how can we connect during the touch point so somebody gets into confirmation stage or a transfer stage or any employee life cycle change so how can i connect so that is another program which uh, we are working towards launching so that this will be an enhancement for employee to keep connected use the technology better thank you prakash and suresh i hope that answers your question shraddha and ankita we will take one last question this is from sakshi again she asked does it capture any early warning signals on potential exit of new hires see we have been running uh, the program for a long time shared services the technology has become an enabler so uh, we have something called accelerate and discover as a program second so this data of course helps in finding out the early warning signals either at a onboarding stage or at an uh, acquisition stage and then this data goes to our hr folks for them to you know align or partner with the respective supervisor or the manager to retain the potential resources of course yes thank you so much prakash and suresh and with this question and answer session we are going to wrap up today's webinar once again we thank today's webinar partner people strong a special thanks to our speakers prakash and suresh for this webinar and so much insightful information that they have given to us today i would also like to thank everybody in the webinar audience for participating in today's presentation stay tuned for many more such exciting sessions that concludes today's webcast thank you and have a great day